make major decisions in our lives. And I think when we look at our lives, um, as we've been talking about faith, um, there are situations in our lives that we go, man, that was definitely a step of faith in my life. But then there's also situations or things in our life where we go, man, I really played it safe here. Or I, I made sure I knew exactly what was going to happen before I did that. Um, like some of us, we proposed and it was like, I don't know what's going to happen. And for others of us, we proposed after we asked every friend and family member of that other person to make sure it was a yes. And, and so some of us have taken steps of faith in our careers, our jobs, uh, with our families. And, and, and some of us, to be honest, we look around and, and, and we look at our lives right now and we go, you know what, this, this, is, this is how I like it. Because I see it, I know it, um, I can feel it. Um, and, and we make these decisions, and, and it's so interesting when we, we think about following Jesus. Um, like, like, we're not the disciples where it was like, oh, there he is, let's go follow him. Like, we learn about him through his word. And, and when we think about heaven and the reality of heaven that, that we live with by faith, this conviction as Jesus followers that heaven is to come. Like, like I personally haven't gotten to see heaven like, now I think I've seen it in some dreams that I've had, but really it was just me floating in the air and it was really cool. So I was like, that must be heaven. Like, I haven't, like, so that reality, um, I, I can't, I haven't, like, physically been there and experienced it, but I'm called to live by faith in the reality that that's coming. And that's hard. Um, and, and, and so we're looking at these heroes of the faith in Hebrews chapter 11, and we're going through and we're talking about these individuals from the Old Testament, and, and we're seeing what it was about their faith that was so incredible. And today we're talking about Abraham. Now, um, that is a name that, that regardless of your background or your belief system, you have heard of Abraham. And Abraham is the guy, whenever I look at Old Testament characters, I think about me being in Sunday school and the flannel graphs and, and what the takeaway was when it was Abraham. And I just remember singing the song before the story, you know, Father Abraham had many sons, many sons had Father Abraham. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're lucky. Um, no. <laughs> Man, we were singing that at home. That was like... And, uh, and, and then I remember the main story was him being called to, by God, to kill his son. And then in the last second, no. And I remember that. Uh, but today, what we're going to talk about is that initial step of faith by Abraham. And we see that, like, like he is the guy that even in the New Testament, they reference. Stephen, who was the first martyr after, after Christ um, had came and, and gone to heaven, he, he's preaching to the Jewish leaders right before they're about to kill him. And, and in Acts 7, he begins his message by showing how Abraham had trusted God by leaving his homeland and believing in God's promises. Paul uses Abraham as the central illustration in his powerful argument in Romans chapter 4 for justification by faith. So we see Abraham is, this, is the classic example of the life of faith. And what we'll see and what we, we know if you've read his story is he was not perfect. But in Hebrews 11 verse 8, it says this. It says, by faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. Now, where is this, where, you know, we've been going back and forth, and, and, and in order to understand the story, we got to go back to the Old Testament. So if you have your Bible, turn to Genesis um, chapter 12, and in Genesis chapter 12, we see this calling. And, and in Genesis chapter 11, towards the end of that chapter, in verse 27, it talks about his father, Terah, and it talks about how they uh, came out of the land of Ur. And, um, and, and so he grew up in this. And then in, in chapter 12, verse 1, we see, Now the Lord said to Abram, Now, for those of you that, that maybe are unfamiliar, he, his name was Abram, and then God changed it to Abraham. Uh, his wife, who we're going to talk about today as well, uh, was Sarai, Sarai, um, and it, it was changed to Sarah by God. Okay, so if you see some verses and you go, Wait, how many wives did, well, that, Sarai and then Sarah, her name was changed, Okay. It says in, verse, in chapter 12, verse 1, Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you, and I will make of you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, and, and, that you, and, 
so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. And in, when Stephen, in Acts uh, chapter 7, was giving his message, in chapter 2, he said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran, and said to him, Go out from your land and from your kindred and go into the land that I will show you. Then he went out from the land of the Chaldeans and lived in Haran. And after his father had died, God removed him from there into this land into which you are now living. Yet he gave him no inheritance in it, not even a foot's length, but promised to give it to him as a possession and to his offspring after him, though he had no child. Okay, so Abraham has this incredible encounter with God. Um, and, and we don't know when and how, but, but we know that, that from Joshua 24 too, that Abraham grew up uh, in an unbelieving, idolatrous home and society. So it wasn't like he was like, like, like spoon-fed, uh, you know, the gospel and, and, and this, like, uh, like a product of his environment. He actually uh, had a rough environment, an anti-God environment. And, and so we see that, that you know, we, we don't know uh, when or how God first revealed himself to Abraham, but we know that he came from a rough background. Isaiah even refers to Abraham as the rock from which you were hewn and the quarry from which you were dug in Isaiah 51.2. In other words, he's reminding his fellow Jews that God sovereignly interceded to call Abraham out of paganism and idolatry in order to bless him and the world through him. In other words, God chose him because he chose him. Like God didn't, God didn't look and go, oh, that's so great. Wow, I'm impressed. I want him. Like, like, no, God chose him because he chose him. And, and, and I think for us, have you ever, like, like been around somebody and, and you're just, and, 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 like, God is using them and working through them and you're like, how is God using him? Or how is God using her? And you're like, man, I know them. How is God doing that? <laughs> you're like, right now? I'm thinking, no. Um, but <laughs> my wife is. But anyway, like, there, we have friends, we have people, and, and maybe it's even you. Maybe God has used you. And, and I remember the first time that I was speaking uh, to a group, and it was the first time, like, publicly I'm speaking. And, and, and I'm in the process as I'm speaking. I'm like, I can't believe what's happening. Like, as I'm speaking, I'm like, I can't believe God's doing this. And my best friend is in the crowd, and he's looking at me, and he's going like this. Because he knows me. And, and he, is, he wasn't amazed at me. He couldn't believe that God was using me. And I think for some of us, we've experienced that. All of a sudden, we're in a situation, and God's like, hey, speak. This person's going to ask you about your faith. And you're talking about your faith. And as you're talking about what you believe, you're actually convicted about how you're believing what you believe. And, and you're, but you're trying to share it. They keep asking, ah, well, yes, I follow Jesus as best I can. And da-da-da-da-da. And, and all of a sudden, God's using you, and you're like, you're amazed how he can use anybody, anybody. God chose Abraham because he's God. And so we need to be reminded of that. God calls Abraham to leave his country, his people, his father's household, and to go to a land he would be shown. Like he didn't know where, a land he would be shown. In Greek, the initial by faith he obeyed translates to as soon as Abraham was called, he obeyed. No hesitancy, procrastination. He shows an eagerness to obey God. His faith is shown by the fact that he didn't even know where he was going. I mean, imagine that. Like, imagine God, like, like clearly uh, communicating to you, hey, um, I want you or I want you and your family, you're going to move, and, and I want to do this through you, but I'm not really going to tell you where you're supposed to go. I just want you to go south. So get the U-Haul. Just, like, like, imagine that. Like, we read these things, and we're just like, oh, yeah, he had good faith. No, 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 like, like, like you, you, Like, you're leaving. Some of you have been raised here. Your family's here. Your grandparents are here. Like, like you have your own little, like, section of property where y'all live. And, and, and maybe, and just imagine God saying, out of that comfort, out of everything you know, you've got your dream job, and he says, I want you to move now. 
I want you to go. And, 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 and I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm not even going to tell you where you're really going to land. But I want you to go. And Abraham does this. You know, um, we're in that why stage uh, with our kids of where they just ask why. And um, I don't know what triggers that, but all of a sudden it's just curiosity like crazy of why, of why. Well, why is that green? Well, why is that car there? Well, why did the light turn red? Well, why is it green now? And, and, and Dad, well, why did you speak at church? Well, why are we home now? Like, it's just why, why. And, and I find more and more in my life that I do that with God. And I've got no business doing that with God. Like, like we, we want to know why. Like, hey, God, that's, that's a good, that's, that sounds great, that sounds big, but what are you going to do? Like, how are you going to do this? And, and what is my purpose, God, in going in this direction? And, and, and what we see here is you don't need to know. Like, he's God. And so there's going to be times, like, 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 if you knew the why, it wouldn't be faith, right? And so there's going to be times where he's going to call you, and, he, and, 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 and you're not going to know what he's going to do, and he's just going to ask you to trust and to obey through faith. And we got to do it. When any person comes to Jesus, there's a journey from the old way of living into a new life, just as Abraham's faith took him from paganism and unbelief. In, uh, in 2 Corinthians... 5.17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new, a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And, and I love it because it's just like that picture of, of baptism. It's like to death with that old, all of that, and to life, to the newness of life with Jesus. And so there is that initial calling for all of us. The life of faith begins with our willingness to leave our own errs. Giving up the old life is one of the greatest obstacles to coming to Jesus and is also one of the greatest obstacles after we are Jesus followers. I have this conversation probably weekly with people where, where they, they will get to this place where they're like, you know what, Steve, I believe um, and I understand it, but I just want to keep doing this. Like, I want that, but I really like this. And, 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 and I literally know people that, that will not do this because they're not ready to deal with this. And, 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 and to me, I'm like, come on. Like, like you, there's no way you could say you really understand this if you still want this. Because I see what this, this is actually doing to you. You see what it's doing to you. But there's so many people that, that they, they see that calling and they understand and know that it's going to be a change. It's going to be a journey. And guess what? I kind of like this. I, I, or maybe I'm just not ready to deal with this. And I think for some of us, too, we have come, maybe it was like a dramatic encounter with God that we had, and we've moved forward, but then all of a sudden after that, those obstacles, those things that were initially a part of your life that you had left, they start to creep back in. And so all of a sudden, those things are obstacles again to you really living this life by faith. And I find also, too, that the perception that's out there that, like, that living this way is boring. Like, and, and it, it fails to understand that once we become a Christian, once you become a Jesus follower, we are given a new set of values and desires which we cannot experience in advance. Like, do you understand that? Like, like, like we, we are so quick to be like, oh, it looks, ha. Huh. Like, so you follow Jesus, so you got you to gotta not, you don't, you don't do that? Or, or you're about that, or, or you go to church, like, you go to church every week? Like, you do that? And you pray and, and, and all this stuff, and, 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 and it's crazy because, like, like they, they look at that and they go, that's boring. But, but I always say, like, listen, God has literally given me a whole new purpose, whole new desires. He's, he's, put, he's put this brand new mind in me to where what is fulfilling now wasn't fulfilling then. Like, he's changed me. And listen, like, like I, can't, like, I can't simulate that for you. 
Like you can't, like, like there's so many people, like you can't have the satisfaction of a life with Jesus before you've trusted him as Lord and Savior of your life. Like you can't have, you can't experience that satisfaction until you have it. Like you can't. And, and, and there's so many people that say, well, I'm going to try it out for a month and we'll see. We'll see if I behave like, like you behave. We'll see if like I'm happy about this like you are. We'll see if like I have this faith, this belief system. We'll see if I'm excited about this like you are. And I'm like, like no, you can't simulate this. Like, I remember going to, um, and I remember the most powerful thing was, was literally during times of worship, I would go in, and, and I remember the thing that always just struck me as odd is they're singing these songs, and at that time, songs weren't very good, okay? Like, you're pretty blessed, okay? Like, when I was growing up, Christian songs, to now, like, um, now hymns, those, those are sweet. But there was some just Horrible Christmas, Chris, Christmas and Christian music um, back in those days. And so now you've got these amazing songs. And I remember people singing and they're just happy. And then other people are literally getting emotional and they're crying. And I remember sitting there going, like, why are you crying? Like, what? You know, and, and, and then all of a sudden I experience God. And all of a sudden there I am during a worship set. Just like. God, like, I couldn't have simulated that. And I'm not an emotional person, and all of a sudden, during a worship song, I'm like, during a worship, you can't simulate that until you've experienced God. Like, like we had baptisms last gathering. I'm sitting there watching some of these guys get in the water with their kids, and they're baptizing their kids, and I'm over here. I'm just like, I'm a wreck. Like, I never felt that until I had encountered Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And, and listen, if you're here and you're like, I want to just play it out and see what happens. Mm, no, you're not going to experience what this is talking about. He's talking about going all in. Making him the sole object of your affection, your faith. The root meaning of holiness is separation. Being set apart for God. When, when, when people say, I haven't experienced this, but I follow Jesus, I ask, have you, ever, have you ever surrendered? Have you ever surrendered? The initial call on the chosen person of God's chosen people is separation. And in Hebrews 11, 9, as we keep going, Hebrews 11, 9, it says, By faith he went to live in the land of promise as in a foreign land living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. So Abraham was immediately willing to give up everything for a life of dwelling in tents. Tents were not considered permanent residences, okay? Back in those days, and they still aren't. Not only Abraham, but also his son and his grandson, Isaac and Jacob, lived their lives in tents, and they also didn't see the fulfillment of the promised land. They were in the land God had promised, but they didn't settle down in it. Abraham didn't build any houses or cities. He had to be patient. He never owned more than a small plot to bury his wife, Sarah. The word translated sojourned in, is used in Genesis to describe Abraham's living in the promised land as temporary, without ownership or the rights of a citizen. It was promised but never possessed. Think about the patience in order to live like this, without complaining, as an alien, in your own land. Like, 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 do you understand? Like, he's in the land that's promised to him, but he can't build. So it's his, but it's not his. And he's living like this, knowing that God is calling him here, and this is all going to be mine, but I'm called right now to live in a tent. And I'm supposed to wait for God to deliver, to bring about this promised land to me. And I'm here, but God, what's wrong? We're, we're having these conversations, um, I know at home with, with, with my oldest, where, where we're teaching him, like, yes, this is going to be yours, but you have to do this and this. And he doesn't understand it's right there. Why can't I just have it? Like, it's right there. Like, Dad, there it is. And he'll go back after we've explained the process. He'll come back and be like, hey, can I have it now? Hey, can I have it now? Hey, it's right there. And it's like, we just, we just talked to you about this. And, and I think for us, we do this with God all the time. And, and I don't know how Abraham did not do it with God. 
Because he's literally seeing it. It's around him. It's everywhere. And he knows this is going to be his. And yet, for whatever reason, he's able to be patient in that, waiting, knowing that it's his, but he can't have it right now. Man. Abraham never saw God's promise fulfilled. He just waited. Often the hardest times for us are in the times of waiting. Abraham waited years for the son of promise that he was supposed to get, and he waited all his life for the land of promise, which was never given. Never given. What kind of faith do you have? Man. You know, in James 5, verses 7 and 8, it says, Be patient. Therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord, see how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Man, it's, it's, it's hard. It's discouraging. Like being patient, like, like don't pray for that ever. I mean, it's like it's hard. It's discouraging to to pray and to trust and to work hard for results, to see results, to see God's results. And yet and yet it doesn't happen sometimes like some of you have prayed for certain people or for circumstances. You prayed for years, for years for this one person. Years, and and God, like, please, let this be the time. God, use me. Is today the day? God, will you just soften their heart? Will you help them be ready, God? Like, Like today, right now, some of you right now, there's someone here, and you're like, come on, God. Use that broken pot up there on stage to connect something. Like, like it's literally, we are just like, God, I just ask. I love them. You love them more than I love them. I pray that you would do something there. And isn't that hard when you don't see any progress? If you don't agree with me, You're on another planet. Like, it's hard. Like, waiting is not easy. And it's really hard to wait when I don't see what God's doing. And I don't understand why. It's really hard when when, when I'm praying and I'm actually doing what I believe he's telling me to do. But still, it's not happening. It's like God, like, like one plus two is three. Like, I'm, I'm doing the formula I see in here. That's hard. There's so many people I know that, that are great examples that have served hard. I know so many pastors that are friends of mine that have served for years and years and years and been faithful. And, and it's just, they're just like, man, I don't know why it's not happening. What is God doing? Am I called to be here? I've had friends that, that have gone, like, like literally sold their stuff and gone to a foreign country to be a missionary. And they're over there for years. And it's like, man, like, I don't know. There's, there's, there's difficult times. There's, there's questions as to, like, gifting. There's questions like, did, did God really call me here? Because, like, nothing's happening. And I've seen people that have spent their whole lives starting something. And they had this, like, vision for it. And yet they don't even get to finish it. Someone else gets to finish it. And it's so hard. Some of you have taken a step by faith that you believe God was calling you to, and you're waiting right now. Faith only sees the promised success. Faith only sees the promised success. And you've got to be able to move forward in that truth. In Hebrews 11.10, it says this. It says, for he, like, how did he do this? Well, in verse 10 it says, for he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. Okay, so, so how did he do it? The secret of Abraham's patience was his hope in the ultimate promised land, which is heaven. Just as ours should be. He was patient because his eyes were on the city. Not this city, but the, the one with eternal foundations planned and built by God. This city is permanent and superior because from conception to completion, it is the work of God. And he says, that, that is what I'm focused on. Like this, man, this is dirt. That's what I'm focused on. And I don't understand this. This is difficult. This is hard. And and it's been years now, but, but, but this, this. I love what Ezekiel 48, 35 says about heaven. It, it, it talks about the city, and, and, and it says the city's name is the Lord is there. The Lord is there. This is the only way we can make it on this earth in this culture. 
That's why Paul says in Colossians 3, 2, set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. Listen, uh, some of us get so rattled and we get so taken back and thrown off by anything that someone does to us, says about us, or something about my job or, or my, my current circumstances or, my, or a political agenda. And all of a sudden, our whole earth is shattered. If your whole earth is shattered by that, you do not have your mindset on the eternal. And, and I get it. If you're shattered, if you're shattered, that means that this is everything to you. So if anyone messes with this, like, like sometimes we're like, why are they so angry? Why are those people so angry? Why are they so upset about this? Like they're upset because this is their salvation. This is it. And, and so if I'm going to follow Jesus and, and if I'm going to have an eternal mindset, then something that should mark me as different is that what is going on here doesn't rattle, doesn't shake me, doesn't defeat me because I'm focused on the eternal city. I'm focused on heaven. And so, and so, yeah, this stuff is going to be hard and messy and, and there's going to be these seasons of doubt. But, but how did he do it? How did Paul do it? Because they were focused on eternity. What is your preferred promised land? And I think that's a good question because I think for some of us, we honestly, by our lives, we would prefer our promised land to be right here. Is the Lord there? Is, does your preferred promised land have the Lord? Where's your focus right now? Or is your salvation already built here? Or are you building it? In Hebrews 11, 11 through 12, he, he says, By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man and, as, and him as good as dead were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. So uh, we look at this, and from, from a human standpoint, it was impossible for Abraham and Sarah to have a child. Because what we see um, in, in Genesis when we read about Sarah is, is she is really old, okay, and in Genesis 11, uh, verse 30, we read this. It says, now Sarai was barren. She had no child. She was barren. And then in, in Genesis 16, 1, we see, now Sarai, Abram's wife, had borne him no children. Okay, so, so she's barren. She hasn't been able to have any kids. And by, the time, by this time, she's 90 years of age, far beyond the time of childbearing. Like, she's not, like, in her groove. Like, 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 some of you are, like, just, like, this is, like, I know for us, this is the season of life we're in. We make kids. Like, that's just, like, the season. They weren't in that season. That season had come and gone a long time ago, and it never happened for her. And this, this gen the Genesis account for Sarah, honestly, we use it as an example of no faith because it, it shows, like, like, her lack of faith. Like both Abraham and Sarah on different occasions had laughed at God's promise of a son at their old age. In Genesis 17, uh, verses 16 and 17, and this is really good because um, I love how God doesn't hide the humanity in these heroes. Like he allows us to see. Like this Bible, you guys, like, like this isn't like, oh, it is like, it is so like, perfected like that 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 it, it, it just sugarcoats anything that's bad like like oh no like last week we talked about some wrath <laughs> and and we also see like the humanity of these people and and in Genesis 17 16 through 17 it says this and this is God he's been talking he's talking to Abraham he says I will bless her and moreover I will give you a son by her I will bless her and she shall become nations kings of peoples will come from her then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? Shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, bear a child? And then in chapter 18, uh, verse 10, it's her turn to laugh. And, and, it's, and it says, The Lord said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent door behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in years. The way of woman had ceased to be with Sarah. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I am worn out and my Lord is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? 
So, so listen, we, we, they're heroes of the faith, but then we're brought into like, man, where's your faith? Right? Where's your faith? She even took matters into her own hands to complete God's plan, God's promise. She actually persuades Abraham to have a child with her maid, Hagar. She didn't trust God's promise and was bent on doing things her own way, which she found out was not the way of happiness or obedience. Sarah's impatience was costly. There's still conflict today because of that. And I want to caution some of us today who are looking for an easy solution or a way to speed up the process for God's promise for you. Let him do it his way. Like when I think of the decisions that I've made um, that were not good, when I think of things that that I've said or done that have hurt other people, um, those are decisions where I said, God, thank you for the destination, let me have the map back. Or God, like, like, thank you for this. Now, let, like, like, I see what you want to do, and that's great. Let me help you accomplish this through me speeding it up. Because I think, I think a lot of us were, 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 were like, okay, God, like, that's awesome. You placed this on my heart or on my mind, um, and, and, and now it's like, all right, so when are we going to fulfill this? And we're like, okay, God, like now's the time because this happened and this happened. So this must be now. And, and a lot of us will take decisions or moments or opportunities and God's like, no, 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 no. That's not your promise. That's, that's not the promised land. Like n- not yet. But we're like, no, God, it is. I'm ready. And we see like, like, like it's here for us that, that like you need to be cautious with this. Let him finish it. He's got it. It's his promise. And in Sarah's, Sarah's the emphasis in verse 11. Like, like Abraham, he had impregnated Hagar, and he has kids after Sarah's gone in Genesis 25. So, so like, like it's, the focus is Sarah right now. And it's interesting, like, like even Abraham's faith, he's like, there's just no way. So it's got to be like, it, the, the child's got to come through my steward. Uh, and then God's like, no, it's going to come from, like, physically you. And then he's like, oh, okay, so this servant, Hagar. And then God comes back. He's like, no, it's actually going to come from your old, barren wife. I, I don't even like saying that because I just feel like my wife's eyes are just piercing right now. And, um, like, like, this isn't, like, against you women, okay? Like, just know that, all right? And I love you, honey. And, and so, you, like, like, literally, um, you need to know that, that she's the focus here. And what God does here even shocks Abraham because his wife had given up and he thought there's no way. Like, she's even, like, gave me her maid. Like, 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 there's no way. So it wasn't like he was like, oh, come on, Sarah. No, he laughed. And it wasn't like she was like, oh, I got this. No, she laughed too. But when you look at this, when you see what happens, she was the one who by faith received power to conceive. Do you get that? Do you see that? Like, at 90, she conceived and gave birth to the promised son, Isaac. And, and my, my, my thought is, man, maybe some of us have a little Sarah in us, right? There's been decisions you've made that were actually out of a lack of faith. There's situations where, honestly, you laughed. In fact, some of you right now, if you could talk to yourself 10 years ago, you would laugh at where you're at. You wouldn't believe it. And, and when God does something, like, like I, I think sometimes we're like, oh, okay, God, let's do it. Like, no, there's times like, and when you start following God, his version of big and yours are totally different. He's going to put something God-sized in your path, in your plan, in your purpose, and you probably will go, ha, 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 Like, like you, you may laugh. Maybe you have. Maybe there's some of us who have bypassed the patience to get the promise. I want you to see something. She, and I don't know how, I don't know when, but she was able to come back and to be bold and approach God through faith. And he, through his power, blesses her with a child because of her faith. And so, yeah, we see her laugh. Yeah, we see her go, man, like, no way. (laughs) But it's God. It's God. She was able to come back. And, and, and for some of you right now, you need to hear that. Like, like, like maybe you're like, man, my life is littered with bad faith decisions. Or there's been no faith decisions in my life. And I want to encourage you right now that you can come back. 
you can get it right. Like God, God's not done with you. And so there's opportunity, and, and I believe she's highlighted for us to see. And we see in verse 12 that Abraham had children upon children. Every Jew that ever has been and ever will be born is a result of Abraham's faith. And this is the power of faith. This is the power of faith. You know, it's interesting, in Genesis 18, 14, um, after, after she's been laughing, um, he, God says, why did she laugh? Is anything too hard for the Lord? He responds, is anything too hard for the Lord? I want you to think about that right now in your own life, in your own current state, the things you're wrestling with, the things you're thinking about, the things you're processing. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Now, for some of you, maybe you have been pretending so long you're agreeing with me, but your lifestyle contradicts that. Because by actually, maybe your lifestyle, you're actually saying, no, 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 for him to actually do something with me would be too hard. For him to actually fulfill this promise, this thing that he placed on me in my heart, no, nah, you, you, you can't really do that, Steve. Like, you don't know. I don't know. I don't know, but I know that through this, by looking at these heroes of the faith, I know that if you will, by faith, pursue him, by faith, and allow his plan to be his plan and be patient in it and, and allow him to finish his promised land, whatever that is for you, and if you will keep your mind fixated, not on everything that's happening around us, our culture, our society, I mean, it's jacked. It's all over the place. But if you can focus on heaven, on eternity, on the things that matter above all this, you will see him take you on an incredible journey. And for some of you, that starts today. Like, that starts today. You know, we're going to have baptisms here uh, in a minute. And I don't know. I don't know who's getting baptized. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I don't know. They don't tell me, so maybe I'd preach differently. But um, like, I don't know. I don't know who he's going to call to get up and to go and to get baptized. But I will know this. Looking at Abraham's life and that, I know that if he's calling you to do something and he says, I want to start a journey with you, you should take it. Like, like do you understand, like, like, um, like, the response to faith is difficult. It's hard. I'm, I'm, I'm literally, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that because we just read that. But he promises to take you not to this place that's like, oh, over here. But he, 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 he takes you. He says, I want you to come, be a part of this plan. And you may not know what I'm going to do, but it's going to be incredible. And I want you to be a part of it. You guys, like, I want you to just think for a moment at how God sees you. Like, do you really, really understand it? Because I think how you sees you is very different. And for some of you, you've never received God as your Lord and Savior because of how you look at you. And I want you to understand something right now. Like, like the gospel is very clear. Like, like God, God's not like, oh, Abraham, and then, and then you, and then this person. Like, like, he loves us all equally, and he willingly sent his one and only son, Jesus, to come and live a perfect life, to be a perfect bridge between your sin and humanity and to his perfectness and godness. And Jesus sent his one and only son to come and to do that. And guess what? People weren't like, Jesus? Like, no. Guess what they did? They murdered him. They murdered him. And, and, and this is like God is up here, and he's providing a way for you, for me, for our past, our present, our future mistakes, our sins. And, 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 and here's what I just can't comprehend. He is literally like, like allowing them to do that for his son, his only son, for you. And, and, and what, what do they do? They, they, they crucify him on a cross. And, and, and guys, like, like listen, if... I would, he left his son on that cross. Like, do you understand that? Like, he left his son on the cross for you. Like, he, and he didn't just leave him there. He had to turn away because of all the sin that Jesus was taking on that cross. All of mine, all of yours, all our ugliness, all the stuff that we continually do and we've done. Jesus is up there, and God has to look away. But he leaves him on that cross. I will be honest. I would not leave my son on a cross for any of you. None of you. Like, there's not one of you in this room that I'd be like, oh, okay, Kingston, you stay up there for them. No way. I am pulling my son. I'm ripping him off. Nope. Now you go, what's wrong with you, Steve? Well, I'm not God. And you know what? I definitely wouldn't do that for someone that's going to continually do things against me, speak against me, not believe in me. No way. But you guys, that's what God did for you. And in that moment, as, as, as like Satan is licking his chops, as Satan has operated through Judas and goes, <laughs> I got it. No. Jesus comes back up. 
Jesus comes back up and has victory. And out of that victory, you and I can come and we can sing with joy, with praise. You and I can walk and live with an eternal mindset because we have the opportunity to receive that free gift of salvation in our hearts and our lives and be forever changed. And so that we can know and walk confidently through faith, by faith, knowing the end result. And I want to encourage any of you that need to receive the free gift of salvation to do that now. And to make him Lord and Savior of your life. Because you can't simulate it. you got to go all in with it. If that's you, I want to invite you to make that decision now. Let's pray. God.